Hey Bible lovers, I'm Tim Nichols and I'm here to bring you your Nichols worth and today I want to talk to you about why I love the Bible. So we're going to start off with the first and most obvious reason. I love the Bible because it gives me everything I need for every sector of my life. Number one, as a man, it lets me know my role in the world. Number two, as a husband, it lets me know how to run and direct my marriage and how to properly love my wife. Number three, as a father, it gives me instruction on how to raise and to love and to admonish my kids unto righteousness. And then number four, as a pastor, it gives me insight on how to lead a congregation of people, how to shepherd people, and really just how to properly minister to the flock of God. And beyond that, even if you're not a pastor, you have a call of God on your life to serve Him, not only in the capacity of working hard, finding your role in your family, but you too have a call of God in your life. It may not be occupational ministry, but there is something God has called you to contribute to His kingdom, not only through His church, but through the world and the people around you. Not just to make the world a better place, but to really share your faith with your friends and family and those around you. So that's one reason to love Bibles, but another reason I love Bibles is because I'm a lover of books. I've got books at home, I've got books in my library all around here, and I've always loved to read and I've loved to learn. And there is no better book in the world than the Word of God. And I believe the Word of God should get treated better than any book on earth. And that means that it should be a few things. Number one, it should be attractive. It should be readable in the sense that it's translated well. And then it should be readable in the sense that it's laid out nicely and it's comfortable to read. So let's talk about a few aspects of that that are really critically important. First of all, when it comes to translation, I have a King James Bible here that I had in my house when I was growing up. I was raised in the Catholic Church. We had a semblance of God. We had a semblance of the Bible. And of course, the King James Bible was something that was very popular and still is one of the best-selling Bibles in the world. For good reason, it's a wonderful translation. But for me, as someone who was raised in a household with drugs and alcohol and really didn't have any priority or focus on God, although there was a Bible in there because there's Bibles in pretty much every house in America, most of the time, it's going to be a King James Bible, and while that's a great translation, if you've never read the Bible before, it can be very difficult to understand, especially with some of the archaic words. And of course, now I know about resources where they define the archaic words at the bottom of the page and different things like that. And then one day when I was an adult, somebody gave me a life application study Bible, and it was in a translation that I could read and understand in the NIV. And I got saved reading the NIV Bible in the life application study Bible really reading those notes and taking in the information, it was just so revolutionary for me. To be able to, number one, understand it, and then number two, have some help in areas where maybe I didn't understand, and learning how I could use those things in my daily life. That was just transformative for me, and it's really what led me to becoming a Christian, and later on, entering into the ministry and becoming a full-time pastor, something that I'm very grateful to be a part of. So not only is it important that you understand what you're reading, but it's also important that you can read what you're reading. A lot of Bibles sometimes for the sake of keeping them inexpensive they will put them on cheap paper and you know some of the older Bibles the paper becomes really brittle and it breaks and it seems there was a time that the layout and the readability of a Bible from a raw layout standpoint wasn't really a priority for a lot of publishers and I think on through the years they began to really understand the importance of a Bible not just being readable not just that we have a good translation but that we have a good form factor, a good layout, a good size font, a good looking font that is nice and dark and easy to read. All of these things are just so important. And I love that aspect. I love typography. I love typeface. I love looking through these things and really exploring what gives each Bible its own personality and what makes it unique. That's why I love that each publisher with each translation really goes through great effort to develop a typeset and a typeface that really works for them. So being a lover of really nice books lends greatly to me actually being a lover of Bibles as well. I love Bibles because there are people that put great effort into making them beautiful. Now, if there's any book in the world that needs to be beautiful, I think it needs to be the Word of God. Now, is it necessary that the Word of God be expensive? And the answer is no. Publishers are proving today that you can make Bibles not only beautiful, but you can also make them inexpensive. Here's a great example in the NKJV 
personal size large print. You see that beautiful design on the spine? This has a really nice leather soft cover. It has nice stitching. It's got a sewn binding. It's got an excellent layout, really nice paper. So there's really no excuse to not make Bibles beautiful today, at least from a cost standpoint because we can keep Bibles relatively inexpensive and still make them really, really nice. Now, you know I love Bibles bound beautifully in beautiful leather. And that is something that we do have to be careful about, that we don't let the outside become more important than the inside. What's inside is incredible, but I also think there is value to looking at a shelf and saying, you know what, that is a beautiful book. I wanna pick that up and I wanna look at it. I think of publishers like Skylar, who are committed to making beautiful Bibles. I think of publishers like Humble Lamb that are committed to not only making the binding beautiful, but to make the gilding beautiful, and just so much commitment to make the Word of God the most beautiful book in the world. And even publishers like Thomas Nelson and Zondervan and Steadfast and so many others that make more affordable but nice, beautiful Bibles in this beautiful leather. There is something about a beautiful book. This is nothing new. This Bible right here, it's almost 200 years old. And as you can see, it's got beautiful ornate work. It's got the beautiful gilding. So this isn't a new thing. Even going back into the 1500s and before, all the way back to the Codex Vaticanus, you can see that it's laid out beautifully. This has been important for hundreds of years to make a Bible not only readable, but to make it pleasant to the eye. I believe that everyone needs one Bible that contains a few things. Number one, that it is in a translation they can read and understand. Number two, it's laid out in a way that's pleasant to them, that they can read easily, that it doesn't cause their eyes to be strained, that it has a large enough font for them, that the font is pleasant and nice looking to them. It's laid out in a way that it doesn't seem crammed. All these things get you to take in larger chunks of God's word and ultimately transform and shape your life. Then when it has a beautiful cover, even like this little inexpensive guy right here with this really nice, leather soft cover. If you look at it and you think, you know what, that's attractive. That's something I want to pick up and that's something I want to read. You know what, it looks so nice on the inside, maybe I'll spend a little extra time reading it today. I think that's critically important. Another thing is the Bible is not like any other book that you're going to read one time and then lay it on a shelf and then maybe reference it now and then. A Bible is something you're going to be reading every day for the rest of your life. And I think it's critical that it's something that you enjoy looking at. When you open the pages and just see what's inside and you enjoy that experience, the Word of God is not just physical, it's spiritual. And it's something that should be fully enjoyed. And I also believe that worship is multi-sensory. Worship involves more than just your eyes, but all your senses to include your sense of smell. There's nothing like grabbing a Bible that's made in some beautiful leather and giving it a sniff and just realize that smells so good. And it draws you to it. Anything that draws you to the Word of God, I think you should do. So the most important thing you can do is have one that you will read and enjoy. Whether it be a $25 leather soft or whether it be a $350, $400 rebind. That just depends on your budget. But today, no one has any reason to have a Bible that they can't read, that isn't constructed well. Even these inexpensive ones right here now have a sewn binding, they have good paper, they have line matching, they have the beautiful font, they have everything that you need. Even this has a really nice double-sided satin ribbon. Just all the extra bells and whistles on an inexpensive Bible, there's truly no excuse for you not to have a Bible that you can enjoy spending time in. So I love the Bible. Not only for the content of the word that is in it that transformed my life, but the fact that publishers are committed to making it the most beautiful book in the world. The Bibles in my office are the most beautiful books that I have. There are no books in my office that really outshine the Bibles, and I think that needs to be the case. And if you happen to be a person that has the budget to get you one really nice Bible, then I highly recommend it because it's going to last the rest of your life, and it's going to be something that you can pass down to your children, and it's going to be something that lasts from generation to generation where they can say, this was my dad's, this was my grandpa's, this was my mom, this was my grandma's Bible. There is something that cannot replace. We are not just handing down a Bible. We are handing down a legacy of faith that we want to see visit generation after generation. I love the Bible because it transformed me. I love it because I have one that I can read. I love it because it's laid out well, and I love them because they are absolutely beautiful books. God bless you. Keep calm. Jesus on. This is your Nicholsworth.